over 130 years ago, a Catholic monk named Gregor Mendel discovered some basic laws of heredity. Mendel worked with pea plants, much like these, here at the University of Wisconsin Research Lab. And the laws he discovered about peas, it turns out, work equally well for Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, apple trees, and human beings. Well, today in labs all over the world, thousands of workers are building on Mendel's laws of heredity, finding new ones, and creating a revolution in life science. The scientific advancements at the University of Oxford have been masterful in intervening in the nature of animals. Professor Richard Smith, a distinguished scholar at the institution, following his extravagant and bold expedition to the unexplored islands of Indonesia, has achieved a significant breakthrough in the respective fields of genetic mutations in the laboratory alongside his medical and experimental team. Having meticulously studied the properties of certain yet-to-be-classified creatures in the neural Bari Park, Professor Smith discovered intriguing genetic patterns previously unseen in animals that science has diligently studied. To test this, the medical team prepared captive-bred African frogs for analysis and subsequent modification of their genetic material. The objective was quite specific to make the offspring and their descendants resistant to extreme environmental conditions, enabling them to transform their skin into a true biological armor. In this way, these animals would become extremely resilient to highly acidic, hot, cold, and corrosive solutions. And just as we can turn the thermostat up, the body can choose a higher set point suitable for fighting a virus. About this new set point, homeostasis still maintains a narrow fluctuation. Different organisms maintain different set points. Bird temperatures fluctuate about a set point of 42 degrees Celsius. But not all organisms can control their temperatures. As the temperature of the environment rises, the temperature of the frog also rises. A graph comparing the two temperatures looks like this. The normal cells of African frogs, also known as Xenopus lavis, exhibit typical characteristics of eukaryotic cells, with a plasma membrane surrounding the cytoplasm and nucleus. Moreover, the nucleus contains genetic material organized into chromosomes. A notable feature of African frog cells is their substantial size, facilitating manipulation and detailed cellular level study. It is noteworthy that their use in resistance experiments is attributed to an active participation of the plasma membrane in processes such as cellular respiration, protein synthesis, and cell cycle regulation. Additionally, they possess a high regenerative capacity, distinguishing them from many other species in the animal kingdom. Through chemical alteration of the plasma membrane, scientists have successfully modified its structure to reinforce it and create artificial fungal barriers that through their respective characteristics, aim to alter, at a macro level, the upper layers of the epidermis initially. This resistance is expected to promote a hardness rating of 0.8 on the Willington scale of capillary hardness, with reference to biochemical onslaughts, excluding impacts and or explosions at this stage. The cell now divides the chromosomes divide, the DNAs divide, and you have two complete cells with two complete sets of code. Each cell identical to the one it came from. And the process continues. Two become four, 
4 become 8, 8 becomes 16, 16, 32, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. And we get millions and billions of cells, all with a complete set of chromosomes, DNAs, and codes needed to make you, you. When the medical team initiated interventions in the cellular structures of African frogs, some of them, and notably their offspring, began to grow in size and exhibit characteristics of hardness in their musculoskeletal apparatus. They also developed mutations in their hind legs, transitioning from being born with one pair to three pairs or even odd quantities. These mutations did not deter the genetic intervention. According to specialists, they were nothing more than mechanical alterations that did not have a significant impact on the animal's quality of life, nor did they result in motor difficulties or pain. After four generations of genetically modified African frogs, they were subjected to the incineration test. Given the previous conditions to which the cutaneous material in the mannequins had been exposed, they were expected to survive without any problem in the nearly 1,100 degrees of the incinerator. And so it happened. The 10 African frogs selected for the test successfully surpassed it, experiencing virtually minimal damage to the cutaneous tissue and a cellular alteration of approximately 4% burns on the plasma membrane, which took the incredible amount of 2 hours and 35 minutes to regenerate. However, they not only achieved a spectacular repair, but also hardened further, significantly increasing the filament networks that protected the cells.